thank you for joining in the worship. That's what we're here to declare. Jesus taught a message that many have allowed to fade in the background. And I found it as a burden on my spirit to declare that word. Uh, and I've been declaring that word in this ministry for over 20 years. And God has been good to me. Uh, my God, to keep that word <laughs> in integrity. Uh, not just declaring it, but living it. Hallelujah. And I believe there are more that desire to have that word and to live according to that word and not just wish to live according to it for as i was in the wish list for a long time wishing to live right wishing to be holy wishing to be a child of god but the word of god kept convicting me the word of god kept telling me i'm not there the word of god kept telling me i'm far Word of God kept telling me, I'm worshiping with my lips, but my heart is far from him. The word of God kept telling me, to anyone who practices sin is not of God. The word of God kept telling me, hallelujah, that anyone who is born of God cannot sin. I found these words very disturbing. Although some have pushed them under the carpet and chose to make other excuses to compensate for them not keeping that word. Huh? I found that I want to make sure, as Peter said it, make our election what? Sure. I wanted to make my election sure. I was fed up of laying in bed at night wondering if I would be approved in the Lord if I did not wake up on this side of the land. Come on, somebody. And the word of God show me that there's a sure way. There's a what? There's a sure way. It's no Russian roulette. Maybe I make it, maybe I don't, because this hangs in the balance of eternity. And he says, you need to be sure. Huh? And didn't the word of God say you can be sure? Oh, the church where I used to go to, they said, no, you can't be sure of that. Only when the Lord comes, you will know. And at that time, when you know, it's too late to do anything about it. Hello, somebody. So there's a lot of persons say they preach in the gospel. When we check out what the word says and what they're preaching, we realize, say, eh -eh, that ain't the gospel. Hallelujah. The gospel that Jesus preached is the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah huh peter said in second peter 1 verse 10 to 11 he says therefore brethren second peter 1 verse 10 to 11 therefore brethren be even more diligent be even what more diligent and if he says you must be even more diligent doesn't it rest on you to ensure it goes this way he says, be even more diligent to make your call. To make what? Your call and election sure. For if you do these things, he says, you will never stumble. You will what? I think the Christian life went full of stumble. Till they didn't start to sing song, we fall down. And we get up for a saint is just a sinner who fall down and get up. The sinner's glad to hear that kind of thing. But that ain't the gospel. Saint is not just a sinner who fall down and get up. Uh -uh. He says, therefore, if you do these things, he says, you will never stumble. For so what? For so. In other words, in this way, when he says, for so. He says, in this way, an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. A what? 
and entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into what? The everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Huh? So it's not jump in church, get water baptized, get membership, and say, I am saved. Uh uh. That kind of gospel is not gospel at all. Hallelujah. Because it's one gospel. Huh? And Paul declared that there is one. No, sir. Hallelujah. That's in Galatians 1, verse 6. Paul says there are some who sought to preach another gospel. But he says there's not really another. They're just trying to pervert the gospel. And the real gospel doesn't have any perversion in it. Hello, somebody. It's if the message is perverted, it will pro produce perverted people. And that's why today you can have gay Christian. Huh? You can have gay Christian, you can have thief in Christian, you can have adulterate in Christian, you can have murderer Christian. But when we check in the Bible, there was no murderer Christ. There was no gay Christ. There was no thief in Christ. So if you are a follower of Christ, will you become that and still be a follower? So something is definitely wrong with the gospel they are hearing. Uh-huh. Paul said to the Galatians in Galatians 1, verse 6 to 8, he says, I marvel that you are turning. You are what? Turning away so soon. He said, there's a fear of you turning away. But what Paul said, I never expected say it would be so soon. Because when you're coming at this thing new you know, as babes, you're, you're, you're likely to be drawn and influenced easily by people around you. And that's why you need to connect with spiritual parenting. Proper oversight and guidance to who the Lord appoints you to. You get the thing? Because if Pitney there ain't not every and everybody hand. Huh? He hardly can tell why mother and father. And then anything, anyone can guide him anyhow because they're easily influenced. So he says, Paul said to them, Paul was the one who brought the gospel to them. And Paul said to them, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Is there a different gospel out there? <laughs> Watch what Paul said. He said, it is not another gospel. Because he says, which is not another. But he says, but there are some who what? Trouble you. In other words, they, they, they speak some things that cause you to doubt what we have taught you. They have trouble you and want to what? Pervert the gospel. They are putting things in the gospel that was not there. Perversion has an impure mixture. Hallelujah. And he says, they're perverting the gospel of Christ. But what did Paul say? But even if we, what did Paul say? Even if we are an angel from heaven, my God, many who have some perverted gospel today, they can testify from their founder, say, someone saw an angel, an angel telling them, say. And Paul already spoke on this and said, if it's even an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel. Huh? I'm sure, say, LNG, we ain't talk about that angel issue there. I don't know why I hear about that one day. Eh? He says, but even if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel. Any what? So there's another. Paul says, no, there are people who are trying to pervert the one gospel we get 
by inserting their own traditions and opinions and philosophies and views in it. Watch this. He says what? Huh? What should you do? Let him be accursed. Come on now. Now what did Paul say? Any other gospel to you than what you have received. In other words, he already preached the gospel to them. And through that gospel they were saved. But now they believe, say no. We need some top up some things we never understand and get from Paul that made us in a vulnerable position. And these Jews came and told us, listen man, Jesus was circumcised. Jesus was keeping feast days and ceremonies and new moons. And you're not keeping it. So I want to follow in Christ. And they were moved to start this practice. Lord have mercy. It wasn't just circumcision. Because Paul said to them, you are now observing days and months and years. So it wasn't just circumcision. It's that they had wanted them now to practice Jewish customs. Yes, the Lord did give many of those customs to them. But did the Lord command Gentiles to do these things? And that's where some crossed the line now and said, No, you're false because it's for everybody. It's for who? All right, let me show you how they said that. Come on now. Now, eh, every sister in the church is my sister. Correct? I'm in the church. Every sister in the church is my sister as we are part and one in the body of christ even my wife is my sister but every sister in the church is not my wife and they cannot say because i give an emblem to bear as witness between me and my wife that they can come and take it too because if I give it to one, it given to all. It doesn't work like that. There is a witness. There is something given to mark this covenant between me and my wife, which they said then is a sign. No, sir. They call it a witness. They would say then it's a marital token, a mar wedding ring. No, sir. Or something that showed that the marriage had taken place between both of us. And both of us wear that as a sign. Hello. But the other sisters, them in the church can say, if you give it to one, it's to all. That would be a perversion of the gospel. And many still preaching a perversion of the gospel. Because then if every woman in the church how can take that sign is Saddam we have in the church. Because there are certain things I can do with my wife that I'm not doing with other church sister. And the other church sister can't say because you don't love me why you're not doing that for me. It's because of the covenant I have with my wife. I can do those things with my wife and not with them. Now some will get vexed for that because that's why some Gentiles want to become Jew. Because they believe say Jew is a fearful position that they want to become. And they don't realize in Christ. There's no distinction between Jew and Gentile. But under the old covenant, there was a great difference between Jew and Gentile. So they need to understand that when persons saying that the old covenant or the old testament is the 
is the secrets of the new. But, but the new is revealing the old, so it's the same thing. It's a lie. Jesus is not the animals in the Old Testament. Be now for our sacrifice for sin. It's a lie. So when they say those things, they are of course missing that the Hebrew writer wrote to the Hebrews and tell them, if there was no fault found with the first, he would have not made a second. You hear that one? If there's no what? Ah. In other words, there are some things in the new that rectify some things in the old that the old could not rectify. Let me say it again. There are some things what? In the new covenant that rectify things that the old covenant could not rectify. And that is tailored to many parts of scriptures in hebrews 8 verse 7 to 8 a hebrew writer is writing to the hebrews and said for if that first covenant had been faultless had been what faultless then no place would have been sought for a second because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. A new one. Hello. And that new one didn't just speak specifically of them alone, no, but there's an inclusion of the Gentiles now. There's a what? inclusion of the gentiles in the first it was just the jews and there are several scriptures that say first to the jews then to the gentiles no so several scriptures that the gospel was preached first to the jews then to the gentiles no so right so we know that it didn't come first to us and when it came to them it was to us because the Jews and the Gentiles were separate through the law the Jews and the Gentiles were what separate through the law the law marked the Jews as a different people the law marked the Jews as what a different people set apart unto God so the law have a good purpose this first covenant had a good one not true but he says though it was good because it proceed from God it wasn't bringing forth what God want to see that's why he says he found fault with it it's not because he didn't make the law it's not because he didn't give the law. But he says the, the result that he's looking for. Uh, it is not producing that. Oh, come on. Hello. Paul made it this way clear to the Galatians. That if anyone by observing the law could be made righteous he says then Christ coming would be in vain it would not be necessary did you hear that the aim then is not to give man some list of things to do and not to do list the aim is to get man right with God the aim is to what? Is to get man right with God. Hallelujah. Come on now. Paul said in Galatians what? 6, 
Jagations 2 verse 16 to 17. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. What does justified mean? Made righteous. Come on. Is the term of making something that was crooked straight. What it means to justify. Making it properly aligned with God. He says then the of works of the law doesn't bring that. He says a man is not justified by the works of the law. But by what? But by faith in Jesus Christ. Is he just believing that Jesus is the son of God and that is it? No, he's believing in that one and in that one's life. And in the power of the spirit of that life. To dwell in him to produce that life. So when he says faith in him, it's not faith in talks about him. Our faith in the religion they made of him, which they call Christianity. It's not faith in the religion. It's not faith in, the, in just things spoken about him, but faith in him. Because many can know things about him and still not be in him. Many can be in the religion, Christianity, and still not be in Christ. And that's why you're seeing a plain evidence and distinction between the both. Because the word does say if any man be in Christ. He's a new creation. All things are what? Passed away and behold all things are become new. So we know then that being in Christ is a different thing from being in Christianity. Because person can be in Christianity and still be in the old way. But you cannot be in Christ and still be in the old way. Woo. You can be in Christianity and still be practicing sin, but you cannot be in Christ and still be practicing sin. Hello? Because the word of God tells us anyone who abides in Christ does not sin. Ah, come on now. That's 1 John 3 verse 6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 John 3 verse 5 and 6. Give me 5 and 6. Right. It's our 4 to 6 is good too. He says, whoever commits sin also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is what? Lawlessness. And he says, you know that he was manifested to do what? To take away our sins. It is not to cover up our sins. Now many have been taught he's there to cover it up. So though we sinful, before God's eyes, God can't see the sin. Because he just cover it up that all he sees is Jesus. That is not the gospel. Watch this. He says, you know that he was manifested to do what? Take away our sins. And in him, does the writer talk about uh, in him? Yes, John says, in him there is no sin. That's why John says in the next statement, whoever abides in him, does not sin. Now I'm sure. Many who are in Christianity. Cannot say that. Only those in Christ. Can say that. 
Uh -huh. So he says, whoever sins, John says, has neither seen him nor known him. They don't know him at all. He says, had they really know him, they would never sin. Sin for a believer is done in ignorance of him. But once they know him, come on now. There's no ignorance here now. You got this? That's why the Hebrew writer said in what Hebrew 6, he says, then if persons who know him willfully enter into sin, there is no point of repentance for them. Watch this. He says in Hebrew 6, verse 4 to 6, for it is impossible. It is what? It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of what? The Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and what? And the powers of the age to come. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they have crucified again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Come on, somebody. Now many will say, no, I know him, but I messed up. I just fell in sin, but I know him. No, you did not know him. It's now you know him. If you really know him, and you fall down in sin, I can tell you, you know, I have nothing to bring you back. Listen what the verse says. The writer says, for it is impossible for those he don't say it is likely difficult. Or the odds are high for them. They might not, but maybe they can. No, he says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Many believers have not gone to this level. But people are impressed with them and cheer them on for their zeal and passion to come. Huh? But until they have him tasted of the partakers of the Holy Spirit and the heavenly gift, tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, they have not truly known the Lord. They are familiar with his presence. Familiar with the word. Familiar with the house. They can learn from watching behavior of others. How to respond and assist others in time of need. But have they really known him? Come on. Because the word of God says here. If they really know him. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucified again for themselves the Son of God. Are you hearing the word? Do you believe the word? Or is the word something that is optional? Persons can say, I choose to believe or I don't believe and I'm still alright. No, the impact of you not believing will have dire consequences. Hello, somebody. Because it's belief that must lead you to what? Repentance. Huh? The gospel that was preached was being perverted. The gospel that was preached was what? 
being perverted. And Paul made it plain that he would not allow this perversion. Hello? He would what? And because Paul would not allow this perversion, that was the very reason why they had Paul beheaded. It was his own religious people from his nation that prompted and, and, and rallied for Paul to be killed because this gospel didn't fit in with the Jews' religion. And Paul says in Galatians 1 that he persecuted the church because he was formerly in the Jews' religion. The Jews' religion is not the movement of the church. Persons need to know that. The church is not a religious organization. The church is the family of God. The church is what? We need to redefine these things that people understand Jesus didn't come here to start a religion when he says, I will build my church. There was no reference to church before Jesus came and said, I will build mine. Yes, there were temples and synagogues, places of worship. But Jesus didn't build a place of worship and call it church. It was people he discipled and called together in the faith that he called church. And he called those people his brothers and sisters that shared his father. So they are referred to as the household of God. And at other points they would call it the household of faith. Paul said he persecuted the household of faith. He what? He persecuted what? He didn't say I persecuted Christianity. The religion. Because I believe in Judaism, my religion as a Jew, I'm persecuting this new religion called Christianity. He said no. He's persecuting what? The household of faith. My God. Come on. It's the household of God. That's why Jesus could say to Paul, why do you persecute me? It's not the religion you are persecuting. Me, Jesus said. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is the son of God. He says here in Galatians 1, verse 13 to 15, for you have heard of my former conduct. You have heard of what? Former is not the conduct that he have now. It's not the way he lives now. He says, you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism. He's not in Judaism now. He says, how I persecuted what? The church of God. Come on. You see, the church of man. You see, no religious organization. This is the family of God. You can read in other, other, what they call them, other versions, and you'll find it says, the household of God. That's what church means. Called out one, but what are you called out to do? Called out to be, receive the rights to become children of God. God is expanding his family through his son. And not every creature is his children. Come on now. So he says then this right is given to us. 
to become children of God. And how do we become children of God? Through the word, the son of God. And his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Paul said, I advanced in Judaism. They did not discredit Paul for persecuting these saints. They actually promoted him for it. In Judaism. That's what is called the Jews. Religion. And he says, he tried to destroy it. And he advanced in Judaism beyond many of his contemporaries in his own nation. Being what? More exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. There were traditions handed down that they thought was being violated, neglected, or discarded by this new faith. That was being declared by Jesus Christ. And they had him crucified for that very reason. And now many years later, Paul was being persecuted. Paul was being opposed and even executed. Because he was preaching against these same traditions that they held as merits to make them righteous. And Paul was saying, if those traditions made you righteous, there would be no need for Christ to come. Those traditions could purge you of your sin. Those traditions could stop you from sinning. But it did not. But he says, what God did in sending his son huh, is not to establish some tradition among men is to make them a new creation is to what make them a new creation in christ jesus hello somebody hallelujah so that's why paul says in verse 15 at galatians 1 he says when it pleased god who separated me from my mother's womb and call me through his grace. What did he do? To reveal his son in me. It was not to change me. From Judaism. To Christianity. Notice how Paul speak about their. Different from how Christians speak today. They move from Muslim. To Christianity. They move from Rastafarianism. To Christianity. But they have not really. Come in Christ. Come on. Paul didn't say he moved from Judaism, the Jews' religion, to Christianity, a new religion. No, Paul says, God in his time to reveal his son in me. To reveal what? Is his son was revealed in him. It wasn't a mere move from one religion to another christ is not a religion uh -huh. and many have christianity but don't have christ that's where we're having the problem in society that's why people are being confused when they hear pastor do some things bishop do some things deacon do some things elder Doing some things in the church. Because you never heard such things of Christ. So how can one be in Christ. And do such things. See if we don't tell the people how the word really go. How the gospel really go. They will still have false understanding and views of this thing. And when they see it they say. Oh then the whole thing is false. But Jesus gave the gospel. And the gospel of the kingdom doesn't bear anything false in it. Hello, somebody. It is true from beginning to end. And Paul says, God revealed his son in me. 
What did Paul say? God revealed his son in me that I might preach him. Is not preach Christianity about him. It's to preach him. It's not to give the Gentiles a religion called Christianity. It's to give the Gentiles Christ. Hello. There's a distinction between Jesus and the religious crowd. There was much religious crowd around him that had a lot of debate with him about the law. Had a lot of debate about how he's handling his disciples compared to their disciples. About washing of hand and ceremony and clean and about dietary laws and about the keeping of Sabbath day. But that was not what Jesus was about. And he made it clear. I can't pour new wine into all wine skin. I can't put what is new to those who are crystallized and solidified in their own mentality thinking they are right when they are wrong. You can't teach people that are unwilling to be taught. Simply put. And only those who are willing to be taught can learn from the teacher. Uh, those who come not willing to be taught and come like an education officer to grade the teacher and see if the teacher pass. They don't come to learn. <laughs> and many of them came to check out Jesus to use his words against him. They were the religious crowd. Notice none of the Romans came to question Jesus to trick him in words. It was the Jews of the religious crowd defending their traditions, defending the law. And the Lord said, you are trying to defend the law, yet none of you is not keeping it. So that makes you bad defense. You're trying to defend some that even not even you keeping. So that make you a big hypocrite. Come on, somebody. Because why would you be defending others from breaking things that you yourself breaking? You're a big hypocrite. And Jesus had some serious issues with hypocrites. The most time you hear Jesus raise his voice and talking until he reached a point where he had to walk away or run away. He broke upon hypocrites. Those who wanted to project themselves as being good when they weren't. Project themselves as law keepers when they weren't keeping the law. Project themselves as defenders of the word. When they didn't obey the word. Come on. And the one who was obeying the word. Who could teach them how to obey the word. That was the one they came to kill. And the Lord said to them. Woe unto you Jerusalem. You killers of the prophets. Everyone the Lord sent to warn you. Everyone the Lord sent to correct you. Everyone the Lord sent to bring you in right order to make you justified straight before him. You push them away and now you're crooked while you're saying you're just. So you'll still remain crooked and the judgment will come upon you because of your crooked state. Come on. That's all the Lord says. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long have I longed to gather you? As a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings, but you would not let me. And now your house is left in ruins. Huh? That's Matthew 23, verse 37 to 39. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those were sent to her how often i wanted to gather you 
to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you were not willing you were not willing see your house is left to you desolate for I say to you you shall see me no more till you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord come on somebody he said I came in the father's name and you dishonor me but one will come in their own name and him you shall honor and he shall be the ruin of you come on because those who are truly of God seeks to honor God they are not seeking their own honor come on those who are seeking their own honor have a different priority list huh? those that are seeking their own honor have different objectives those who are seeking the honor of the Lord put their life and welfare at risk to bring honor to the Lord and many are not like that they are hirelings they are there for the wages huh? because they jump on board and they will get house and they will get car and they will get special benefits special holiday and special gifts vacations and treats but they are not there for the welfare of the soul of the people that are entrusted to them Jesus called them hirelings that don't really care for the sheep ah huh? come on somebody in John chapter 10 verse 12 to 13 Jesus made a comparison between a true shepherd and a hireling huh? a true shepherd and a hireling and start from verse 11 Jesus says I am the good shepherd what does the good shepherd do the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep but a hireling when is who is what he who is not the shepherd is there taking care of sheep you know but so he looks like a shepherd just like the other shepherd but he has a different heart towards the sheep because what he's not the shepherd one who does not own the sheep he takes no true ownership for them Oftentimes you hear them tell him, say, it's not my people, they belong to the Lord. No, if the Lord give them to you, they belong to you too. My wife belongs to the Lord, but when the Lord, Lord give me that wife, she belongs to me too. And that is scriptural to say, her body belongs to me and my body belongs to her. She's my wife. Hello. And therefore, I take ownership over what God has given to me. Hello. No, but these islands say, no, it's not mine. I just hear working to watch over them. Yeah? Ireland is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming. He sees it. And what does he do? He leaves the sheep and flees. Huh? Come on. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Eh? Most of them, they say, when hard times eat them in the ministry. Money now to run as it used to run. Then gone foreign. Left the sheep because they're looking for the money. What is the money God call him to watch? Are the sheep? Uh, not to know them something that they don't know about giving life a sheep. Hello, somebody. The hireling flees because what? 
is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Come on. His care is for the funds, the wage he's making. His care is not for the welfare of the sheep that is entrusted to his care. Ah, come on now. So of course he's, the Lord says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and what? And I'm known by my own. I know them and they know me. I don't have to say, well, that sister there, I can't remember her name, the one with the big hat. Well, you just sit on the to that corner. No, I can remember my sheep. And they know my name. Hallelujah. I know them all. Glory to God. Huh? The Lord says, I'm known, I know my sheep, and I'm known by my own. As the Father knows me, Jesus says, even so I know the Father, and I lay down what? My life for the sheep, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, uh, and they will hear my voice. They will what? My voice will, will anchor in their spirit, and it will draw them. You see, that's why the disciples would say, even when they were speaking to Jesus on a, a weir, after his resurrection and thinking they were just talking to a stranger, after they recognized it was him, remember what they said? Didn't our hearts within us burn when we hear his voice, when he speak? Because you see, the word and the voice must draw you. Sheep know that man. Sheep know, say, when is a shepherd assigned to them? There's no way that shepherd can be talking and declaring and their voice and the word don't draw them. Because sheep is drawn to their shepherd. That's why I say, a stranger, they will not follow. Hello? You understand that one? So some persons don't understand why they are misfit everywhere else. But when they come where God has sent them, they find a place there. They delight for place because God assigned to every sheep a shepherd. Hello? Hallelujah! What we say? So he says, when he brings out a sheep, what happens? He goes before them. That's in verse 4. John 10 verse 4. When he brings out a sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. Why? But will flee from him. Why? For they do not know the voice of strangers. Come on. I've met persons who just met me once. But from they heard my voice, something inside let them know, this is where you must be. I didn't have to say a word to them. Because God knows who he has appointed to my care. And God has created a mechanism that when my voice is released in the atmosphere, the anointing and grace he has placed on my life will choose those who are for my house. You understand that? So they will think, say, no, it's just, it's just them come. Not really the voice. But many others out there talking and they're not going. Not true. So, so it can't be coincidence. Anytime... Something's coming again, so God sent you to me. And God fool, not at all. God knows what He's doing, and God is sending you a message to make you understand where you must be, whose leadership you must be under. Come on, somebody. Because if you say trust nobody but God, 
you'll be lying. Because God puts you before men to hear him speak through men. And if you can't trust men, you can't trust the word coming out of their mouth. And if you can't trust the word coming out of the mouth of man, you can't hear the God speaking through men. Come on now. And that puts you in a very serious shape. Hello, somebody. Huh? Because Jesus says those who hear my father, they come to me. Those who what? Hear my father. You see, God was speaking to Jesus' disciples before they came as Jesus' disciples. Let me show you that. Hallelujah. In John chapter 6, verse 45 to 46, Jesus said in John 6, 45 to 46, it is written in the prophets what he said. This was already written before they saw him manifest and come here in human flesh. He says, it is written in the prophets and they shall what? They shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone, therefore what? Everyone who has heard and learned from who? The Father comes to me. Come on now. Come on now. If they weren't hearing from the Father, they wouldn't come to him. He could have seen them in their business and tell him, say, come. They would sit down looking at him like, who this man is talking to? Or you think he could call them out of their business and make them followers of him? Because they heard the Father. Huh? Even when he asked Peter, Ask the disciples, who do you say that I am? Because he asked them, who do men say? And they gave what the religious crowd said about him. But the religious crowd didn't quite capture the truth. But Peter answered and said, you are what? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Huh? Come on now. Huh? And Peter declaring that Jesus said to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Who revealed it to Peter? There it is. He said, But my Father who is in heaven, he revealed it to you. If you weren't hearing him, Peter, you could not accurately answer me. Come on, those who truly come to the Lord must be hearing the Father. <laughs> those who come to the true servants of the Lord must truly be hearing the Lord. Because if they are not hearing the Lord, there will be reasons and thoughts in the mind that create mental blocks. And create some attitude of response that push them further away instead of closer together. They must have a confirmation, an inner witness. What do you say? A what? An inner witness in the spirit to let them know. No man, this man is not just talking. I sense the spirit of God talking through him. I have heard the Lord. The voice of the Lord. And I heard the Lord speaking. When this man speak. There is something resounding in my spirit. That lets me know. This is of God. And not merely of man. Hello. So Paul wasn't here to lead the people to Christianity. Paul was here to lead the people to Christ. Christianity still has sin in it. But Christ has no sin in him. And he says anyone who abides in him does not sin. Come on. That's how we can set a difference between those who are in religion and those who are in Christ. 
and many will hear the very heartbreaking announcement depart from me I never knew you and they will say Lord but we cast out demons in your name we prophesied in your name we done great wonders in your name my God those weren't persons who had no understanding of the power of his name otherwise they couldn't have done such things so how could he say I never knew you never not that I knew you once but don't know you again I never knew you come on and what does he accredit to that he says you practice lawlessness you're still practicing casting out demons you can still practice sin and still cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Because you're not casting out demons in your name. You're casting them out in the name of Jesus. And even the disciples came back and said, even demons are subjected to us in your name. And remember that Judas was among those disciples. One who the Lord said was doomed from the beginning. So demons will still respect the name of Jesus. Come on. So you can cast out demons in Jesus' name. You can prophesy in Jesus' name. And still practicing the current church was full of persons who had been baptized with the holy spirit manifesting the gifts of the holy spirit but paul had to write sternly about them even with a brother who had his father's wife and paul said what kind of thing is this what kind of thing is this he said not even the gentiles those in the world have such a report but he says such a report amongst those who are declared as saints that a man there have his father's wife and you are puffed up and i'm not rather mourn that he who has done this deed might be taken away from you Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1 to 2. And judge, though being absent through the letter, he said in verse 3, For I indeed, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged, as though I were present, him who has done this deed. Now they contain sin in the house, and say all of us are sinners let us not judge anybody that is not the gospel paul said i already judged this man don't be in absent and wrote in letter his judgment come on somebody for he said to them i've already judged them and he says, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In other words, when you withdraw the covering of the church, the Satan is going to unleash his wrath upon him. And in that so doing, he may truly have true repentance in his heart and might be saved. Because there's no salvation without repentance. 
And repentance isn't merely to say, I am sorry. It is to turn away from sin to the righteous ways of God through the word and the leadership of his Holy Spirit. You got it? That's how children of God are made. So they are saying the Old Testament is the New Testament wrong. Because God, the gospel actually says that the law is for the ungodly. First Timothy 1, verse 8 to 11. Paul said to Timothy, this is what he learned through the gospel that was given to him. He said to Timothy, but we know that the law is good. Does he say that the law is good? Of course it came from God. He said it is good. But he says, there's a caution here. What is the caution? If it is used lawfully, in other words, it can be abused. It can be used in an unlawful manner. So he says, what manner then should the law be used? He says, you must know this. This is what you need to know. To know who to use the law on. Watch this. He says, the law is made for. Is not made for. Sorry. The law is what? Not made for. A righteous person. Now remember, those who obey and receive the gospel are righteous because they have confessed that faith in Jesus made them the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what they have confessed. You know? So they don't confess we are sinners still in Christ. They confess that we were sinners now saved by grace. Watch this. So he says, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person. So who then is the law for? The law is for lawless, insubordinate, the ungodly, sinners, for the unholy, profane, murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, huh? For fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. Are any of those persons going to inherit the kingdom of God? No. None of those persons. All that's listed there match what Paul said in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 as the works of the flesh and that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God so it says the law is for those people come on and what does Paul says tells him that the law is for that look what verse 11 says according to the glorious gospel is the gospel said the law is for those people according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust in other words Paul is saying God committed that gospel to me to declare to his people it's the same Paul who said if anyone come with another let him be accursed. The same Paul who said, I did not learn this from men. But I learned this true revelation by Jesus Christ. Come on. That's the same Paul. He said it in Galatians 1, verse 11 to 13, 11 to 12. I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus taught it to him. Watch this again. 
Peter later supported Paul's teaching. Though Peter himself was rebuked openly by Paul in regards to the defense of the gospel. And I'll show you that first. In Galatians 2, Paul gave Peter open rebuke in defense of the gospel. Why? Because he says Paul, Peter was not operating in a way straightforward to the gospel in regard to the Gentiles. And that is still happening nowadays while they say still gospel they're preaching. He says, when Peter had come, that's Galatians 2. Galatians 2 verse, from verse 11. He says, now when Peter had come to Antioch, Paul says, and remember that in this letter, Paul is not writing just for our information. He's writing to Galatian church that also had strayed from the gospel because of some Jews that come down there and tell him to include circumcision marking up these months and years to be more like Christ. And Paul said they had, they had fallen from grace. Watch it, you know. So that's why Paul is, is telling them of what happened between him and Peter to let them know, say, he's no respect of person when it comes to the gospel. Because Paul, P Peter was a, an apostle long before him. And he said, even when he wasn't walking straight for this, I corrected him publicly. You hear that one? Watch this. So it says in Galatians 2, he's making this reference to the Galatians before he write Galatians 3, where he's saying foolish Galatians, no rebuking them because they did likewise. Watch this. He says, now when Peter had come to Antioch, huh, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. He was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, that's from in Jerusalem, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of circumcision, the Jews. And the rest of the Jews also played what? The hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas, was carried away with their hypocrisy. And what Paul said, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, open. I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? By your action, you're making it look like you're better being a Jew than a Gentile in Christ. And he said, you know and me know. Even when we were Jews, we are still Jews. And born as Jews, not like the Gentiles. We know, said the Lord, didn't give us that righteousness. That's what Paul said to Peter. Come on. He says, we who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Give me more. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus. He says, for them to get that righteousness, they themselves, though they had the law, and not sinners like the Gentiles had to believe in Christ to get that righteousness. That we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Come on. He says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ now. We ourselves are also found sinners. In other words, if after we say we're justified by Christ, now we're gone back to sin. He says, then is that showing justification? 
No, he says, then we'll be going back to rebuild the things we once destroyed. You get it? Look what he said here from 17 to 18. If while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Did he say yes? He says, certainly not. In other words, we know for inner Christ and inner no sin. That no work together, you know, Christian and no sinners, sinner that, that is still saved by grace. Not so. It's not a saint, is not a sinner who falls down and get up. That's why I know make them sing that song, they write just because I know who sing it. I know who write this song and I know who make this song public. And you know, you know, right. You understand? You need to listen to the words. It's not melody alone. You must hear and voice. You must listen to the words and see if the word match what the word said to say is gospel. Because if you don't match what the word said to say is gospel, then you might call it gospel song. But it's not gospel. And Paul said that is a curse. You understand it? Eh? So he says, if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, he said, then is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. If I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Come on. You got it? Because that old sinful life must be put to death. Hello, somebody. And if it put to death, or oh, you must still have activity in it. Talk to me now. If you're dead to sin, or you're going to sin. And the word of God says, the faith we have come in to tell us that when we are baptized in Christ, we are baptized in his death and in his burial. Romans 6 verse 1 to 3. Right. So it shows the faith. So many don't know the faith they're baptized in. That's why they are baptized in the religion and not in Christ. They are baptized really in Christianity. But they are not baptized in Christ. And we want persons to be baptized in Christ. Hello. Romans 6 verse 1 to 3. We we'll read from verse 1 to 6. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Paul is writing to some saints that have a wrong understanding of grace and causing some persons under the law to blaspheme the name of Christ because of things they're doing well, they say they're under grace. So Paul said to them, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Grace covers us for us continuing in it. Did Paul say yes? No, Paul says certainly not. And if you're not going to continue in it, you know what I mean? Say, so going to end it. It's either going to end it or you're going to continue it. But you can't have it both ways, so you end it, but it's still continuing. Hello? It says, Sh oh, shall we, oh, what? He says, this is what many saints don't know. How shall we, who oh, died to sin, live any longer in it? He says, if you're dead to it, how are you going to live in it? How are you going to do something you're dead to? Watch this. He says, or do you not know? Is that what he's asking? Is this a case of ignorance that you don't know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Come on. Many didn't know that. They were baptized into his death. Huh? They just know, say, Jesus died for my sin. That's what they were taught. <laughs> they don't know they were baptized into his death. And he said, then if you're baptized in his death, you're also buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, what he said you must do now. Even so, 
also we also should what walk in newness of life can be still sinning and you're calling it newness of life you were sinning before and after you're now baptized in christ you're still sinning and you're saying newness of life that's not newness of life you just have a new religion but you are not in christ for he says if we have been united together in the likeness of his death it, did he say maybe no he says certainly this means that is this is a sure thing certainly we also shall be what in the likeness of his resurrection what he said we need to know knowing this that what our old man was crucified with him what is that old man your sinful nature he said was put to death when you were baptized in christ that sinful nature is put to death he says that was crucified what was crucified was put to death he never just pierced and wounded it was put to death that's why i say you're baptized in a death you died to sin that's why he said that you, know? you died to sin so if you died to it or you must live in it any longer come on he says then you if, if yeah he said then our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be what done away with that we should no longer be slaves of and if you're not a slave of sin how you going to sin how sin going to tell you if you do it then you do it you can't do it because you're not under his control he has no dominion over you you are now under grace you're under the dominion and leadership of christ your lord what you say and that speaks of new life what you say and that's the life god called us to to live in christ if any man be in christ he's a new creation all things are what passed away and all things they come new. That's why Jesus said, not all that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. We were taught that everybody that said Jesus Christ is Lord, they say, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. But Jesus spoke more than that. Jesus says, not all that says, Lord, Lord, to me. So they're saying, Lord, to him. They're saying he is Lord. But he says, not all that say his lord will enter but it's those who do the will of my father in heaven and some thought the will was just casting out demons doing miracles prophesying to people in jesus name but Jesus said i never knew you why you're still practicing sin and he says anyone who abide in him does not sin and only if you abide in him will you know him. That's why I said you shall know the truth. If you continue in my doctrine. Or what he said. If you continue in my word. Then are you what? My disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. What the truth make you free from? Sin. Come on somebody. It's not free to sin. Is free from sin. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Time to release you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father we thank you. That in you we have life. And life more abundantly. Because you declare. The wages of sin is death. For the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. That life is only in him. And you declare he that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son hath not life. And you said anyone that hath not the spirit of Christ. Is none of his. Hallelujah. That's why I say I never knew you. Because his spirit must abide in them. And they must abide in his spirit. And in him. 
there is no sin. Hallelujah. And so I pray grace shall be released now. That we will trust you more than our flesh. We will trust in your ability more than our physical ability. That your ability through your spirit and your word will work in us. Both to will and to do your good pleasure. Because you cannot deny yourself. And when your spirit is operating in us and abide in us. Then the true fruit of the spirit will manifest. And you said again such there is no law. Hallelujah. For those who are of such have crucified the flesh with its old passions and lust. And have committed themselves to God in true righteousness and holiness. So Father I thank you for grace to do so now. Release grace over the hearers not just to hear. But to give way for the Holy Spirit and the word to work. To deny themselves that Christ can be exalted in them. For you said if I be exalted, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Grant us a new heart. Renew the right spirit within us. And let your kingdom come and your will be done. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Come on, give God the praise. Give God the praise in the house. Glory to God. Now the word has been declared. You must embrace the word, not just to hear, but to commit to the Lord to do. To give way to the word of God and the Holy Spirit to do his work in you and through you. What do you say? And God will be glorified. Because God watches over his word to bring it to pass. So it says, he that began a good work in you is faithful to perform it. He will do it. Hallelujah. No one can be Christ better than Christ. <laughs> and Paul said, it's no longer I, but Christ that lives in me. Let Christ live in you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you see it for a minute. We're going to release you. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your spirit. And then we release you. We're giving a last minute to those who are watching online. To just give them more info on the ministry. Those who are watching online, they're watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are here at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. I want you to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There is so much more God wants to pour out into you and through you as you walk in obedience to the word. You will see the power of God manifest in you and through you because God is not a respect of persons. There is no partiality with God. And God, as he did in the heavens to angels who were even made in heaven, that were cast out because they sinned against God. And even Adam and Eve, though being in the Garden of Eden, was cast out because of their sin against God. And even in the time of Noah, many that were destroyed through the flood, and only Noah and his family were saved, they were destroyed because of their sin against God. And even in the time in Sodom and Gomorrah, those cities were destroyed, and only Lot was saved out of that city because they sinned against God. It's the same God. That's what is called the gospel of the kingdom. Is saying God is telling you to repent. He commands it. He's not begging it. He makes he commands men everywhere to repent. And that's the gospel of the kingdom. Is saying that if you truly turn from those ways to the Lord, He will abundantly pardon and give you the strength and the grace. To walk in newness of life. Amen. Praise God. And we released a book last year. It's on Amazon.com. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. Subtitled The Gospel that 
Jesus preached. And it would be an awesome read for you to boost your faith and commitment in the Lord. We encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on, somebody. And so you can get more of the word. In that, you can order to Amazon.com. If you're in a vicinity, you can order it from us. Or if not, you can still get more of the teachings from us to our live stream teachings on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard V. Fagan. You'll be plugged into our five live stream teachings. This is only one of them. And we have five live stream teachings every week from this venue. Amen. Praise God. It's also edited and added with more scripture on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to Apostle Richard Fagan and you'll see we added more scripture to the live stream for those who want to have the word to defend their faith in the Lord and will walk upright to bear true witness to the presence of the Lord in their lives. And we're encouraging you to get in the word to know that. Amen. Praise God. And so, we also encourage you to, there's more teaching on it that we have here. You give us love gifts to person who request it. That is our daily devotional in-house teachings that we have here that have not been live streamed. We put it in what we call our daily devotional and persons can request it from us through the phone number on the screen. That's my phone number from 876-839-9390. 876-557-2427. And we encourage you to do it by faith and see the power of God manifest in your life. Hallelujah. And so we encourage you to do it. Be obedient to the word and see the power of God manifest in your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're blessed today. Hallelujah. Well, keep on praying and keep on believing. Want to know more about us? Check out our website. Church's website is Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L. Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L dot O-R-G. Praise God. So you can just subscribe and check out about us and see more about the ministry, different things, projects that we're working on. And if God has prepped in your spirit to connect with us, to get it done, we believe together we can do more than we can apart by the grace of God and the leading of his Holy Spirit. We believe we can accomplish a lot more hallelujah so be obedient to the voice of the lord and to his word and stand with those who the lord appointed you to and watch what the lord will do because he's god of his word amen praise god so any further questions hallelujah you can call me richard figan at 876-839-9390-876-557-2427 the information is on the screen Looking forward to hear from you to build your most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Come on, give God a praise. You blessed today. Every day is a blessing to hear the word and to stay in the word. It's food to our spirit and life to our soul. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Good. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all. Amen.